Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sasquatch Trail Runners Run Venture Series. My name is Kim Levinsky. I am the owner and race director for Sasquatch Trail Runners in New Jersey. Tonight, we are joined by Virginia Morin, who will be sharing her all about her brand new van life of adventure out west. So before we give Virginia her squatchy introduction, I'm going to share a few updates about what is happening in the wonderful world of Sasquatch trail running. So our next trail party is this Saturday, just a couple days away at Stoke State Forest in Branchville, New Jersey. That's on May 1st this Saturday. It's called the Thunder Chicken Squatch. We are celebrating National Military Appreciation Month with this race and we'll be supporting our charity partner, Operation Chill Out, who distributes clothing to homeless veterans in New Jersey. We have been supporting this charity since we started back in 2018. So if you wanna join us, you can sign up to Squatch 17 miles or seven miles on this gorgeous, gorgeous course. Personally, I think Stoke State Forest is one of the most beautiful parks in all of New Jersey. So if you haven't been there, I encourage you to check that out. Uh, we are excited to share that our friend James Leitner of Mission Clean Water will be running the On Course Aid Station. We are so happy to support his mission to bring clean drinking water to underserved communities around the world. We will also be joined by Chef Dave, who will be serving his world famous quesadillas at the finish line. You do not want to miss that. Every runner and hiker who comes who wants to will go home with a hot and fresh delicious quesadilla at the end of the race. After the Thunder Chicken Squatch, we have the Midnight Squatchapalooza. That is at the Burlington County Fairgrounds down in Columbus, New Jersey. That is on Sunday, June 27th. You can sign up to Squatch for 12 hours, six hours, three hours, or a 5K on that night. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It starts at midnight. It's a midnight Squatchapalooza, and it's basically an all night half day party from start to finish, 12 midnight to 12 p.m. Um, and this is actually the race where I first met our guest, Virginia. And I will tell you about that story in a couple of minutes because it's one of my favorite stories from Sasquad. And lastly, to share with you, next week on May 5th, Wednesday, 8 p.m., we are interviewing Miriam Wisekin. Miriam, aka the Za Report, is an underground pizziola baking up a generous storm of pizza in New York City amidst the pandemic to help keep New Yorkers in need stay happy and full of pizza. She is also an ultra runner and has become a good friend to Sasquatch Trail Runners. If you were at our last race, Squatch Apple, you probably saw her there. She makes friends wherever she goes. She's just a quality individual. Um, so to learn more about our events for 2021, you can check them out on our website, which is sasquadtrailrunning.com. So that about wraps it up for these Sasquad updates right now. So the reason you are all here is my friend Virginia is joining me here on the screen. So like I mentioned before, I first met Virginia at the Midnight Squatchapalooza back in 2019, I think it was. She volunteered all night long to serve runners and hikers at the aid station, which was really more of a party station. That's what it turned into, it was an all night party. Um, the best thing about it was almost all of the volunteers showed up in onesies, wearing onesies, and I don't think they coordinated that. Um, Virginia had on a flying squirrel onesie and has gone down in Sasquad history with that flying squirrel onesie. And that was actually the moment that we, at some point during the night, the idea came up, we came up with the idea to have the onesie fest 5k marathon. So that's the backstory on that race. Virginia was a part of it. She was at that race, the Midnight Squatchapalooza. There was also a really awesome, uh, another story from that night, which I want to share because it gives you a little bit of insight into who Virginia is as a person. So again, this is one of my favorite stories from Sasquad. She met Jessica Simeo at that race and Jess is one of our runners. They hadn't met before, they got to talking and Jess shared that her pacer had just dropped for her upcoming 100 miler and she was in need of a pacer. And Virginia offered without hesitation to pace Jess, someone she had just met at this all night 
race in the middle of nowhere in central New Jersey. And they went on to, uh, you know, Jess finished her event and Virginia paced her through the night. And that's one of my favorite, all time favorite Sasquatch stories. And it really tells you who Virginia is as a person. So Virginia is an accomplished ultra marathoner herself. She's completed many, many races um, all around the country, which have included the Javelin 100K multiple times at the Tammany 10. And of course, I have to say, um, selfishly, she came to our double squatch. And I love it. some of my favorite pictures from Sasquatch are of Virginia. She is so happy. I posted a few of them today on social media. Um, so Virginia recently moved out to Colorado. She moved out west. She left the life in New Jersey, the, left of, the, the life of commuting into New York City. And she just begun her new life on the road in her brand new van. And she is joined by her boyfriend, Alex, and her dog, Jupiter, which I am hearing there's a rumor we're going to meet both of them at some point tonight. So right now, they are currently in Flagstaff, Arizona, making their way around the country. So, Virginia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I love Sasquatch so much. <laughs> hey, the love is mutual. It's, it's, right, it's right back at you, Virginia. <laughs> yeah, when you can combine like the, the geekiness and the silliness of the people that run with like actual quality events, I'm so down. Awesome. I, I love that. That's a great, uh, it's a great summary of who we are at Sasquatch, I think. <laughs> so Virginia, let's start. Um, let's just hear a little bit about who you are as a person. Tell us your, your running story. If, if you had to give us kind of the cliff notes version, how did you get into running? How'd you get into trail running? And uh, then we'll jump into some other fun. <coughs> yeah. So I wouldn't say that I have like a traditional running background. Um, I played a little bit of softball growing up and my dad was the coach and I really hated it. Uh, so I quit for dance and then I went into high school and I was a cheerleader and then I was doing like sorority in, um, in college. Um, but we, we did have Greek week and I was rocking at dodgeball. So awesome. um, <laughs> watch out. Um, but, but coming out of all of that, um, I would like hit the trails every so often with my friend Annie who ran cross country for Allentown High School mm. in New Jersey and she would bring me to this like awesome trail system um, right near a brewery near our house um, called Clayton Park and I never thought of it as trail running it was just like something that we did for fun and we would go like maybe three or four miles and just like sweat and fall and then drink beer afterwards. Um, and sometimes I would go by myself and just like listen to music and run on the trails. And um, when I started my first job, um, I didn't have a lot of friends. They had all moved out of state. My friend Annie moved to California. My other friend was in Brooklyn. And I had another friend that was in Philadelphia. So um, I was really lonely. And so after work, I would just go and run on the trails by myself. Um, and then I met Alex, my boyfriend now at work. And he was like, what do you like to do for fun? And I was like, oh, I like, I like to go trail running. And at that time, my parents owned a restaurant. And I was like, and I, I like to go help my parents out at their restaurant. Um, and just like see live music every so often. And he's like, oh, have you ever tried mountain biking? And I was like, absolutely not. Like, I'm really uncoordinated and I'll get her. And that doesn't sound fun at all. And it turned out that that was his sport that every single day he went mountain biking. And so around that time, he decided that he was going to start trail running um, up near Bridgewater, New Jersey. They have an awesome um, little trail system around him. And he really liked it. And he came back and was like, hey, I started trail running. And my uncle Butch is running um, this marathon out in Pennsylvania, like kind of where they hold um the Little League World Series, like out in that area, like Lock, Lock Raven or Lock something. Um, and the marathon was called the Mega Transect. And he was like, would you want to run this marathon with me? And I've never even run a 5k. And I was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll definitely run this marathon. So I went home and I came back into work the next day. And I was like, hey, I signed up for the marathon. And he was like, what? What do you mean you signed up? And I was like, well, you asked me if I wanted to run it. So I figured that we were running it together. And so then that kind of pushed both of us 
to um, run the half marathon uh, for Bear Mountain that year. And it was awful. I had like such bad IT band syndrome, but I went on and I did the marathon um, and my friend Annie joined us. So the three of us went out and camped and then ran this marathon. And then shortly after, like two months, Alex ran in, uh, the 50K for Virgil Crest, which is actually coming back. So if you haven't heard of Virgil Crest, it's sick. Um, I don't really feel like running up a ski mountain. So if anyone is interested, check out Virgil Crest. Um, I think he came in like fifth in the, the 50K or something. And then immediately he was like, let's sign up for um, this 50 miler in Virginia. So it was like a part of the North Face series, but it was, I think it was like called DC. Um, so we signed up for the DC 50 miler, and, but he got injured. So he had like this really bad um, like hamstring injury. And for a while he was like, it's my knee, it's my knee. And I was like, it's not your knee, it's your ass. Um, but that came way, way after when he finally realized I was correct. So I ran this, um, this 50 miler out in, um, in Virginia, like on zero training. Um, but I like crushed it because like two weeks before I was like, let's go run 30 miles. So we ran, I think like the Columbia trail or something. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a 30 mile out in like closer to Bridgewater area. And <laughs> like, cried and it was really cold and he had to bring me tea but I finished it and I was like okay if I can run 50k then I can run this this 50 miler um so I went out and my friend Annie like surprised me and showed up and paced me at the end and I cried but it was awesome and yeah and that's how I got into trail running that is amazing <laughs> amazing that you ran a 50k on the Columbia trail that's that's like pancake flat rail trail right yeah, it was, I don't, I'll never do it again, ever. Unless someone was like, will you do it? I have this thing where if you ask me to do something twice, I'll always say yes. Oh, is that it? <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll start with one, one question already in the chat from Ryan Thorpe says, we miss you guys and get a tour of the sweet van. So Ryan, I think you have to ask for more <laughs> time and we'll, and we'll get, a, get a tour of the van. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, I would love to give you a tour. It rained and snowed the last two days. So it's a little bit of like um, the inside of a barn right now. Like if you've ever been in a, a horse barn in New Jersey and Alex will kill me. Um, but I will at some point um, show you the outside of it because it looks really cool. We have a lift and like uh, tires and it, it looks really good from the outside. But inside right now, it's very very dirty because of the rainstorm and everything is in um like uh waterproof bags because we're still building out awesome all right ryan you gotta ask maybe one more time in a few minutes and we'll get the uh the outside <laughs> tour of the van <laughs> awesome so it sounds like you really jumped in with two feet into the world of ultra running what was it that you most liked about ultra running that made you stick with it because now you've been doing it for several years yeah so I had mentioned that um I was doing softball like when I was younger and um I gave that up for dancing well all my friends um went on to play softball in college and they're all like really athletic and like super powerful females um just way cooler than I ever like thought I could be um and then after, you know, running um, the, the marathon out in Pennsylvania and, you know, signing up for another race and doing all the training, I just was finally like realizing, hey, my body is like a lot stronger than I thought it was. And, you know, I don't just feel like I'm a girl um, that moves her body sometimes. Like I started feeling like an athlete. Um, and I think just like, um, having having those emotions like while I'm running and like just getting excited about where my body was like really helped me stick with it and you know it's also about you know being outside and like the people that you meet and having beers afterwards but I think for me like that's what really like kept me going um I think just like coming out of college and like having gained extra weight and I was really sick um right after college and I was on steroids and I gained weight and I was just really like upset with my body and I think ultra running just kind of gave me back like 
confidence or even gave me confidence I never had. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think for a lot of people, they have similar similar feelings of especially the, the impact of community. I think you really find that in trail and ultra. Um, okay, so tell us about what was your life like in New Jersey and how long did you live there? Um, and then we'll, mm-hmm. we can chat about when you decide to make the move. Yeah, so um, I was living in New Jersey all my life. And um, just recently, like after meeting my boyfriend, started getting into the outdoors. Like once I met him, I went on my first camp trip. And once I met him, like I went hiking for the first time. Um, so those are all things that were like super new to me. Um, and really like him and like our, our extended uh, friendship group um, with like Ryan and Devang and Annie and um, just like a few other people um, really started to shape what I wanted my experience to be like in New Jersey. And it, it kind of was in contrast to my professional life where I was working in Manhattan. I was at my job for five years um, in Manhattan, commuting back and forth from New Jersey. So you're looking at like eight hours of commuting a day. Um, and I would just, you know, watch Star Wars movies on my phone back and forth and like text friends and sometimes bring backpack beers on the bus. Um, I had mentioned this before to you, but I even saw like, you know, fellow squatchers. I saw, saw Joe there on the bus. Um, but uh, yeah, it just like wasn't an, in, an indicative, it wasn't indicative to what we like to do, which was like meet up with friends and like go to the Adirondacks or the Catskills or, um, you know, hit up, hit up Tammany or um, like, um, like Hudson Valley, Bear Mountain. Those are places that we wanted to be. So we would plan all week for Alex to end work and he would end at four and then he would drive straight to um, one of the closest train terminals from the city in New Jersey and he would pick me up at the tip of New Jersey and then we would drive north to the mountains and we would go to Maine and New Hampshire and like all different places in New York because every single weekend we wanted to get out and enjoy the mountains and we would always like text friends and be like this is where we're camping this is what we're doing like come meet us Um, but yeah a lot of times it was just us like going to Vermont picking up expensive bougie beers and setting up camp wherever possible um so I remember one time we like couldn't find a campsite in Vermont so we camped on the side of a ski mountain and I like didn't bring my sleeping pad and I slept on top of a jacket and I froze all night but um yeah and I I like don't really smoke but I I smoked and I passed out so I don't I I don't even regret having to sleep like on the rocks on a ski mountain because we got to wake up and see the sunrise and do the things we like to do. That is awesome. You you said so many things that make me smile. One of them is that you watch Star Wars videos on the bus ride. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, I know (laughs) Jess Mayo is a big Star Wars fan as well. Um, I will pop this in. We've got another comment from Brian said that his wife, Alexandra, also wants to see the van. So that counts. As uh. <laughs> so, uh. well, we can circle back to that in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's your lifestyle you've described in New Jersey. How do we get to the point where you guys are ready to make a move? Is it something that you know, you've been, you had been dreaming about for a long time. Was it a spur of the moment decision? What, how did you get to that point? Yeah. So Alex and I, you know, started like dating and getting to know each other in 2015. And I think even from the moment we met, we both really wanted to do van life. Um, But the timing was never right. And um, we just felt like, you know, if, if we're going to do it, then, you know, we need to have jobs that are going to let us be able to do the build and you know we have to have the funds to build the van out um so there were again like just time and money I think or what what's that what's on everyone's mind when they're thinking like what's going to stop me from achieving what I want um and so when 
when we decided to really make this decision, it was a couple of things. So um, a couple of years ago, we took a trip. We were supposed to go to Hawaii, but we like didn't make it to Hawaii. Long story short, the buddy pass like puts us at the end of the line to hop on a plane to Hawaii. And we got stuck in Salt Lake and we're looking outside and looking on our phones and we're like, oh, the Grand Canyon's right here. Like um, Moab is right here. Zion's right there. We're not far from um, Yellowstone. Why don't we just stay here? And we had um, like puppy jackets because we were planning on camping in Hawaii, which would have been an elevation, which would have required like a little bit of warm clothes. And we were wearing our winter jackets because it was Christmas. So we went and like loved the area and you know, we, we've loved other areas that we visited, um, like Leadville and um, Boulder, but we never had a connection to an area the same way that we did with Salt Lake City. And so I was like, I think we should, I think we should move here, like genuinely. And then um, when Alex was getting moved into a new position at his job that he had been in since we met, um, I was like, why don't, why don't you just quit your job and get a new job in Salt Lake City? And I can ask my job if I can either be a contractor or be remote. And if that doesn't work, I'll get a new job too. And we'll just move to Salt Lake City. It's the perfect opportunity to go out there. Um, and he ended up finding a job. I asked my job if I could go remote and they said yes, um, that they trusted me to do that. And then we moved out there um, and then boom, COVID hit. So. Um, immediately everyone's remote now he's remote um we have a dog and uh we just started exploring like uh with our remote time spending a ton of time like in Flagstaff and Yellowstone and the Tetons and Moab and Zion and Bryce and like you name it um we've kind of like been in this immediate area uh with the exception of the Pacific Northwest I haven't been there yet um and we've just been really enjoying like that traveling and we were living out of our car for two weeks and Alex has a really like small Subaru. I sold my car before we left. Um, and we just, we just made it work. Uh, we got like a hot spot and we're like, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to make it work. And we're both recruiters. So we have like a little bit of flexibility. Um, and then uh, he lost his job in June and then he got a new job, which is like completely fully remote, like won't ever have to go back to the office. It's based in California. And then um, I was like, this is it. Like, this is when we should buy the van. And we talked about it for a couple months. And then we started like just passively looking at vans. And it, they were really, really hard to come by because with COVID, everyone was buying up the van. Um, like you couldn't get a really cheap one. You either had to find a leftover van that was a 2020 or you had to order a 2021 and we're like well we really want a 2020 so we can like start building it and there were like three times when we thought we were getting a van and we didn't get it like they didn't have it in stock or they sold it like right under our nose and then finally um I found one in Moab and we drove out um right after I ran Havelina and picked it up and had been working on it ever since like on and off that is amazing. So what, what was the date that you got the van? It was what month this past year? Or well, last year? Um, the, the first week of November, 2020. Okay. So yeah, you really just got it, right? It's only a few months. Yeah. Old. And, mm -hmm. and since then, Alex has done all of our electricity. We put in flooring, we put in the ceiling, we put in puck lights, um we've done all insulation we have wool insulation we have some other type of insulation I don't remember what it is um and then it's all framed out to put up walls and shelving so he built um, a couple shelves we have um walnut live edge um countertops and I have done nothing I've basically just like said here's my credit card like I can't do anything <laughs> <laughs> well you're the designer it sounds like you're the designer you help with you help with yeah. that not really you're just like do I, whatever I give my input and I have like you know ideas here and there but at the end of the day like you know he's he's the one that's building it um and I can just say like as long as there's a spot for my books like I just like a small bookshelf and as long as there's a seat for Jupiter then that's okay with me so I've been kind of like 
a little lenient with him and just kind of let him take the rein. That's awesome. I have um, so many questions about the van, but I will, I'll I'll tell you one comment we've got here from Joe Brandine. He said, last last time I saw Virginia was on the bus. So I want to see the van too. That counts as asking number three. (laughs) So you're up to three now. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Um, Okay. I have so many questions about the van. So when you, when you buy the van, is it, I'm, I'm imagining it's like a cargo van where there's nothing in it. There's no seats in the back or is that, or are there seats and then you take it out and then that's when you start doing the build on it. Yeah. So some of the vans are um, passenger vans, but we have a cargo van. Um, so it came just basically metal and um, it had like a, like a fabric flooring that you could use if you're like a contractor um, and like plastic paneling so we took all the paneling down and ripped up the flooring and we were going to use it as a template but we were just we were just better off making our own templates um so that's what it looked like and then I mean the first thing that Alex did was cut a hole in our ceiling um oh for the fan Uh yeah so it's been great because we have flare spaces on each side of the bed I'm, I'm sitting on the bed right now I work from the bed I like to nest I call it um and each, each of the flare spaces, again, which allow Alex, who's like six foot, uh, to lay sideways. And um, there's also like windows in each of them. So you open them at night and there's like a nice cross breeze that comes through. Very cool. And then are, are the only doors, is it just in the rear, like right behind you? Or are there side like sliding mm-hmm. doors? So we have two rear doors um, that open up and then they also like open up even wider if you need to get something really big in. Um, and then we have a sliding door on the side and then our front and passenger doors, um, which all have insulation in them. They all have wool in them. Okay. So I got to imagine that you've had to really pare down your possessions. I mean, <laughs> can we talk about that? What was that like? I can't even imagine. Okay. I I want to preface this by saying, like, I feel like I get a pass because I was working in New York City, but the amount of clothes that I had, oh my God, it's like embarrassing. Even when we came out, we only took the Subaru and the roof box. We didn't have anything shipped. So I had to like leave a bunch of stuff at Alex's parents' house. Um, and I just took like a couple bags of clothes. I was like, this is it. This is all I have. But even then, when we were paring down to go into the van, I'm like just throwing stuff in trash bags and giving it all away. And we didn't really buy anything um, like straight from market. It was all like Facebook marketplace and um, like Goodwill. But even then we were able to sell a lot of stuff. Alex had built a couple of tables and we were able to sell them too. And we left our Subaru um, at our apartment complex. So it's sitting there with just like a couple things in storage right now. But um, the pare down process was intense and it's actually still happening because we're building out the van while living in it, which no one should ever do, but um, (laughs) we're doing it. So, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it now with the situation that we're in and we just need to deal, which is actually the reason that we're in Flagstaff because we just have like this wide open space and we have like a giant um, pop out uh, like canopy tent, like a race director would have. And um, we stick all our stuff under it and um, the rest of it is like all piled up under the bed. And we do have a lot of lumber that needs to like stay dry. So we have a lot of lumber under the bed too. That's all in the van. A lot of it's in the van, but then some of it's under the canopy, like in these contractor bags, because I said it, it rained and it snowed and we were like, oh no, we have all this stuff. So while Alex was working, I'm out there like shoving things in these giant contractor bags and duct taping them shut so that when we left to go to Flagstaff, um, that we wouldn't have to like worry about all our stuff getting wet, like our tools and like our saws and drills and all that stuff. Wow. That's amazing. You know, I've seen, I've seen the, you know, there's those shows about tiny homes on TV. Mm -hmm. We love those. I I do too. I really, I, I watched the series. It was on Netflix or something. And, um, that was always so fascinating to me, the whole process, you know, paring down. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, 
I think that a tiny home is probably bigger than your van, right? So it's probably even- 100%. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like a mansion. for you, right? With the van? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really small. And we don't, so a lot of the people that like you see on van life are living in like giant sprinter vans. So they have extended wheelbases. They're really long. A lot of them have showers and like big seating areas. And we decided not to get a bigger van. Number one, because we didn't want a sprinter. We don't have $80,000 sitting around. But um, we did end up getting a van that was like all wheel drive um, and has eco boost. So and heated seats. I mean, we didn't spare like too much. But um, but yeah, like it's a much smaller space. We opted for the shorter wheelbase so that we could go more places, which is why we lifted it. It's why we put bigger tires on. Um, we want to be able to park in cities if we're going to visit friends or if we want to go in and like have a nice meal. Um, we don't want to like be driving this giant school bus everywhere. Um, and also just to be a little bit more discreet and park in places where we're not going to like get the cops called on us. So um we went back and forth about having a longer wheelbase, but we again we chose the shorter wheelbase for like that discretion and the ease to go where we want to go. Awesome. Um, okay, talk to us about. Um, let's talk about eating and your kitchen first, and then I want to hear about restroom and shower and those. I'm sure you get <laughs> asked this all the time. I'm, I'm just fascinated by it. So let's, let's talk about yeah. your, your kitchen and cooking situation first. Yeah, so I um, I love to cook. It's like my thing. My favorite thing in the whole world was like in the apartment having guests or um, like anyone come and, and visit us uh, so that I could cook for them and entertain. You know, I throw out the cheese platter. I make all the appetizers. Sorry, Hi, Jupiter. Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> um and I had I my dream is to like one day have a double oven so that I can be cooking appetizers and like a, a larger meal at once. Um, but you know we really wanted to do this, and so we opted for a much smaller kitchen. Um, a lot of vans that you see have um, their kitchen taking up like almost one side of the entire van. But because I wanted or we wanted um, like a seating option and a place to put our eventual toilet, it is not here yet. Um, we have uh, walnut countertops that we cut into almost like four by four pieces. And one of them, the sink sits on top of, and the other one, the refrigerator sits underneath. And we don't have one of those chest refrigerators. I was like, I don't want that. That's for like, I don't know who needs that. Um, I wanted the open regular face refrigerator. So it kind of looks like a dorm refrigerator, but it's for a truck. So it's um, more efficient with energy um, and I can fit a surprising amount of things in there. Um, you know, obviously not as much as a standard refrigerator, but when we moved out of our Airbnb, which again, we were in for 33 days, I was able to fit everything in. And I was like, did you see this? Did you see what the refrigerator can hold? Um, and then uh, I just have um, a Coleman two burner stove, which I've had for a couple of years um now and I cook on that and we cook most of our meals um I make a lot of uh like veggies and quinoa um I have an air fryer um so I can do like sweet potato um fries or or whatever um we do have uh, a pretty strong inverter so I'm able to use that as long as we don't have anything else running off the inverter like I have to turn the lights off if I need to use the air fryer um and and yeah I mean it helps that we're both vegetarians so we don't have to have any like meat we don't have to like eat it right away we don't have a big freezer but I can fit like frozen fries or frozen fruit in there um which was surprising to me as well and then I mean the real thing is the beer right like in a in a regular refrigerator you have room for your groceries and your beer um I've been able to sacrifice some vegetables and so my vegetable drawer if you pull it out there's some vegetables there's like some vegan cheese and then there's a lot of beer um but it's like prioritizing you know <laughs> trading yeah. veggies for beer it's all about priorities there <laughs> yeah you need a balanced meal it's <laughs> awesome so it doesn't sound like your diet or eating has changed much because of the van is that is that accurate or yeah um I mean I definitely had like more in my refrigerator and in my dry pantry um, at our apartment in Utah. But um, 
you know, it's just, I go in, I see what do we have, and I'm just going to throw it all together. Um, so canned beans has really been a staple to add into our meals, um, or I can pop them into the air fryer. Uh, we're probably eating a little bit less salad than we normally do, just because salad is um, not as dense of a vegetable as other things. It's a little bit more bulky, so you can't like hold a lot of it. Um, but I don't, I'm not missing it because it's a little bit colder here right now. So you want like a, a nice hearty stew or um, some nice like fried up veggies um, or roasted veggies. So it, yeah, we haven't really been sacrificing and I'll either cook in the van, which I have the option to do. I can open the doors and I'll be like, oh, there's Sedona. Like no one else has this in their kitchen. Or um, if, if Alex is on a call, um, which we're always on calls with recruiters and we're both really loud because we're from New Jersey. Um, then I'll take the uh, stove outside and I'll cook outside on like a folding table, which is just as nice. And Jupiter can run around and I can throw his toy while I'm cooking. That's, that's awesome. Um, Ryan Thorpe is chiming in here again. He wants, he says, uh, hops are a vegetable, I think. What's in the beer drawer right now? <laughs> um, what's in the beer drawer right now? We have these Pilsners, these like giant blue cans of Pilsner. I don't know who makes them because Alex, actually picked them up at a brewery while I was in Target. And we also picked up um, some random guy from Utah and like brought him to a Mexican restaurant. So I, I never got to figure out what the brewery was because we were so um, distracted by this man that we picked up and drove to this Mexican food place. And he actually ended up buying us like giant margaritas and and dinner that night, which was super nice. But I was driving, so I had to like, give my margarita to Alex and just say I will drive you can have this was he hitchhiking or what what happened was he stranded or what yeah so he was stranded and he like really wanted to go to this like critically rated um Mexican place and it was like kind of far away um but he was doing like a 30-day rafting trip down the Grand Canyon um and he just like so happened to be a fan of fish and Alex is like a giant fish fan um and so yeah I was like standing there with my groceries and this guy like sticks his head out of our van and is like do you want to ride and I'm like is this the wrong van but then my dog is on his lap and I'm like okay like I guess I want to ride <laughs> yeah that is, that so, yeah is, big cans of pills there got it all right there, there you go Ryan there's your answer um okay so we covered the kitchen now what in the world for your bathroom what are you doing you just said you don't have a toilet um so it's called a Jesus. all right so we do have a toilet coming I'll say that we're getting the Laveo dry flush but it was back ordered four months because everyone's doing van life everything is back ordered it's crazy um but it, it will ship soon so that's good um and that will sit under our bench, which is where Jupiter sits when we are driving, or it will be where Devang sleeps when he comes out to visit. Um, it's small, but he'll fit. Um, and uh, small. is he gonna fit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll make it work. I'm I'm confident that he'll be able to sleep in the van with us, or he'll just have to sleep in the bed with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, now. So we don't have the toilet right now, right? So we have this thing called a, oh God, <laughs> called a poop shovel. <laughs> and so you just like go out and you like dig this hole for yourself. So you have to like really think in advance, like, do I have to go, right? Because you don't want to be in a, between a rock and a hard place and you don't have time to dig a hole. That's just, you know, you're not burying a dead body. You want to get it in the hole. So um, got to dig the hole. And then um, aim into the hole. And that's what you do. And then you um, pack in, pack out your uh, TP. You put it in a little bag. You put it in your garbage. You know, leave no trace. And really all I'm doing is, you know, helping the, the trees thrive. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Little um, uh, manure, right? Fertilizer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. How about like just every day brushing your teeth, you know, mm -hmm. your hair, everything. How does that work? Where, where do you Yeah. So we have a 40 gallon water tank that's uh, sitting in our gear garage right now. 
we haven't hooked up the plumbing yet. So we are um, working with about like eight jugs of water that we're just going and filling up um, at various places um, and boiling water if we need to like take a shower, I'll boil the water and I'll pour it back into the jug with some um, room temperature water. And then we have like a teak bath mat that we just put outside and flip yourself up and take a, a nice um, parking lot shower. But I mean, we've been taking parking lot showers for years, so I'm not skeeved out by that. And it's honestly pretty nice here because you don't have to worry about peepers or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, in terms of uh, like other shower opportunities like we have planet fitness membership and if we're in town we'll just go in and take a nice hot shower and hit hit the stepper for for a while because every mountain runner needs to hit the stepper <laughs> yeah. that's smart what, did you um were you always a, a member of planet fitness or was that kind of a strategic thing where you were looking you know where mm -hmm. the yeah it was definitely strategic, although I wish I did it sooner because I didn't know how nice they were until we got our memberships. And Alex was like, they have massage chairs. Do we have time for me to sit in it for 20 minutes? I was like, knock yourself out. I don't care. Um, so yeah, we really like Planet Fitness, but I had um, a Pilates membership in Utah and back in New Jersey, we had uh, Law Fitness or LA Fitness. Okay, I got you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so with with your van life, what do you what do you guys envision? Like, are you going to be traveling all over constantly, or are you wanting to like move to one place, live there for a certain amount, and then move on? What's 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 the uh, the vision for you guys? Mm -hmm. So I think if if uh, if COVID wasn't like a factor, we would have different plans because we would have been able to see all of our friends out west. Um, with with there not being any COVID, right? But we've been kind of cooped up and like stuck in Utah for a while. Um, but now we're vaccinated. So now we don't have an excuse to not see friends and family that are living out here. Um, so a little bit of our travel is dictated by seeing friends and family, like in Colorado um, and in California uh, and various friends like all over the place that have been asking to see us. And now that we're vaccinated again, we don't have an excuse to not see them so a little bit of the travel is dictated by like just meeting up with friends and family and the rest is um like a rough plan um a little bit to do with running um so if hard rock happens which i'm pretty sure it will then we're going to go do soft rock so um they mark the course a week before hard rock happens and then the tradition is or I don't know maybe it's not a tradition maybe people just call it this you go out and you run the course um, and it's soft rock so um, I would not run it in one go but I'd like to run either portions of it or all of it within several days um, and we love 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 <laughs> Silverton so anything to get us out there into that area like or if you if anyone listening like hasn't been to Silverton I know Ryan's been there obviously he ran um what was it the Uray 100 out there because he's crazy um yeah it's amazing and anything to get out there and in those mountains like you will not regret it even if that's the only thing you do in Colorado um so yeah a little bit of it is going to be dictated by that I think Alex is probably going to want to do the rim to rim to rim which Kim congratulations we're so proud of you thank you um it's an amazing experience he actually did this was such a mistake Oh, it was the worst. He ran, I think, Bright Angel and then out one end, or maybe he ended at Bright Angel. And it was like, it was like 60 up top when he started. And then it was like 90 up top when he was like in there. So it was like 110, 115 when he was down there. And he had like eight liters of water and he still ran out. And I was like, where is he? Where is he? um like waiting for him because obviously I'm not going down there with him we have a dog and like I'm just not going down there with him because right. it's hot <laughs> I don't do hot um and I had to like rescue him at the end I'm like all right Jupiter like I know this is illegal but we're gonna go down we have to find daddy so we're checking down like trying to find him and finally he comes up looking worse for wear which I mean happens quite a lot because he always goes out and like does these awesome adventures we'll 
prior to the van, he was doing awesome adventures um, all by himself. And I just am there for support. Um, and uh, I was like, are you okay? He's like, get the car. So I'm like, I run, I'm like going to get the car. It's like, I have to move these cones. So I can get the car up to the trail and um, put him in the car. And I was like, what do you need? And he's like, I don't know, I'm really bad. <laughs> so we drove to Starbucks and I got um, two of those like pink um, strawberry frappuccino things. <laughs> And he was like, oh my God, this is bringing me back to life. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I'm just like his girlfriend and his nurse. <laughs> so yeah, Amazing. a little bit of Grand Canyon. Um, and then we want to do like all Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, we definitely don't want to skip out on like any of Washington or Oregon, you know, the beer, the trails, the green. I mean, we love the Adirondacks for a reason and it's the green and to be able to see even more green mm. um, in Oregon and Washington is just like our dream. We can't wait. We're so excited. Um, our dog loves the cold. So he's going to be just blown away by it. And we really want to see the Cascades. And if I get my passport, um, hopefully Canada. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. Yeah, my passport expired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're pumped. That is so great. When when do you think you're heading to Washington? I'm gonna be out there in August um, volunteering at Bigfoot 200. Oh, right on, right on. That's awesome. Um, I think that, yeah, maybe that will align to when we're out there because we were gonna run a race and then I don't think we're going to. So yeah, we might be out there at that point. Um, We'll still be under construction. I don't know how long we're going to be under construction, but um, we're living good. We're able to work. We can eat and sleep. So That's we'll awesome. be there and you can see the van. Oh, I love that. Oh, and either way, we were going to be at um at Tahoe too, right? Yes. Yes, that's right. You said you were going to like jump out of a tree or something while I'm running. <laughs> yes. Um. No, not jump. Fly. Fly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flying squirrel. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, we have a friend that was living in our apartment complex that's doing, I think she's doing Moab and and Tahoe. That's awesome. So probably we'll do both. I was going to pay someone for Moab this year, but she got really bad blisters and had to drop. Ooh. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, when you're, when you're looking at places to travel to with your van – what is like how are you finding a place where you're going to park like is it a campground is it an mm -hmm. alleyway what it what are you doing like parking lot <laughs> so um there's a couple apps that you can use um one of them i think alex uses like um like a, it's it's kind of like freecampsites.net but um but it's a little bit better and more comprehensive um, so we've used that in the past, like when we've just gone like camping or traveling, um, but freecampsites.net is also a really good one. And then um, there's a couple apps, like there's the van life app and then there's the Overlander app. It helps you track where other van lifers have slept before and they can give you up-to-date conditions on what those campsites look like. But then also on some apps like Overlander, um, they will also post like, here's where you can find water. Here's where you can find Wi-Fi. Um, they have toilets or they have showers here. So um, again, like I mentioned, it, it was so hard to get a van because there's just so many people doing this right now, which has played to our advantage in that we are kind of able to um, like team up with these people and track them and, and go off their knowledge. But the other part of that um, is actually a lot like um, ultra running. It's like you, you meet these people everywhere you go. You make friends everywhere you go. The first night when we were in Sedona, we opened up the door and immediately all these van lifers came up and like introduced themselves and like where they're from. They're like, how long have you been doing this? Like, what do you need help with? Um, and then they were letting us know like where they're going to camp and like, did we want to follow them? And they also have all these like meetups, like it was Earth Day um, last week. And they were like, we're going to do this like plant a tree, um, like hippie thing. And I was like, that sounds so cool. But we were, we need to stay in this area so we can build out the van. But 
um, yeah, there's like a lot of meetups and then you just like grab numbers of people that you meet and ask where they're at and hopefully you go meet up with them. That is, that is really, really neat. Um, we do have a couple of comments here in the chat. So let me scroll back up. Saw a couple from um, Sheila Kelly said, all the boomers are into van life right now. And um, her question is, I saw on the news a story about people who live in vans. Many of them have YouTube shows about van life. Do you have any interest in doing this? Um, that's a great question. So I have three Instagrams, one for my dog, one for myself, and one because I like to cook and sometimes I post my food. I never update any of them because I'm really, really bad at social media. And I also just get a little bit shy. Um, so part of me uh, doesn't want to have like social for our van life because I'm just not great at social media, but part of me wants to have it because it'll give our family and friends the opportunity to follow our journey and make them feel included and just like kind of show them because there are some doubters out there that like it's a very viable way to live and we're not homeless, we're just houseless. And uh, yeah, I think it would be great to um, put that out there for our, our family and friends. And also like, um, we're going to campsites that some folks aren't, like we're not chasing warm weather, like a lot of van lifers are, we're chasing adventure and we're chasing trails. So I think it would be a unique perspective for folks that maybe want to see more of that side of van life because there aren't a lot of folks that are just in it to chase trails. Um, like we are um and also Alex was like well if we can make money off of it then we should do it That's so right. TBD okay and if you guys have like ideas for like Instagram names or like YouTube names like let us know because we're creative but we're just like in a creative rut right now if you can imagine what it's like after building out a van <laughs> that is awesome um, okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. I just put in the chat if people have questions, they can ask them now. Um, there was a rumor we we're going to meet a couple of guests. Are they available to come on screen, possibly? I think so. I think Alex might have hopped out for a quick trail run. He might be back within the next five minutes, but Jupiter, Jupiter, come here, come here, come here, come here, get up. Is he oh, kidding? Oh, he's right? tired. Hold on. <laughs> there he is hi buddy yeah we got him in utah um he was left by his owners at a pet smart or a pet co oh my and goodness. then this like um yeah this rescue had to come out and like come get him and we saw him on pet finder and we're like oh he's like so pretty and yeah we met him and he seemed to love us and we're like, okay, we're going to think about it. And they were like kind of upset that we weren't going to take him that day. But then we went back a couple of days later and picked him up and he got right in our car. Like he trusted us and was like, this is going to be a good place. So he has a little bit of training. He went to a trainer um, in Sandy, Utah, just to help him because he's a little bit um, like aggressive with other dogs. But now he loves play dates and um, he doesn't guard his food as much. Um, but he will like bury it sometimes if um, if he's trying to guard it for later. And he loves trail running. He can do like 13 miles. Oh my goodness. He's wow. really, he's really fast and he's um, very like ball obsessed. So if, if he has a ball, then um, he will just like sit there and stare at it until you throw it. And he also really, really loves guests but he gets super depressed when they leave. So for like a week or two, he gets really, really sad when they leave. So um, like Devang and Sally came to visit us. And when they left, he was like distraught. He was so sad they didn't have guests anymore. He seems that's pretty Jupiter. calm. Does he have a lot of energy? He's just calm now or is he generally pretty calm? Um, if I'm relaxing, then he normally will relax. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, if I'm relaxing, then he normally relaxes with me. I think he, like, recognizes that I'm, like, the female and he has to, like, take care of me. Um, but if the door to the van was open and we were, like, making a fire or cooking, he would just be bringing us sticks and toys and all types of stuff. He was, he's rowdy. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
And it's been, yeah, I mean, it's been hard. Like I mentioned, like we both lost our jobs this year. Um, you know, it's been hard with like COVID and not seeing family and just seeing a lot of each other. So having the dog just makes everything happier and better. Of course, of course. Jupiter, he looks like a good, good little buddy. Yeah, it's funny. My cat just made her way. She was been, she's been sleeping for like 18 hours and she just woke up. I don't know if she heard us talking about. <laughs> 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 he likes cats. Yeah. Uh, we got another question from Ryan. Ryan wants to know, what are you guys racing this year? This year. So um, if, if Alex is able to um, get into uh, Manitou's, then we'll be home for Manitou's, which is actually pretty soon. So um, I had mentioned this to you, Kim, before, but he did really well two years ago, um, was in the top 10, along with Ryan and Devang. Um, and uh, it should, like, he should be able to get in, but with COVID, like, if they do any, like, number restrictions, then he'll probably get knocked off the list. Um, but ideally, we want to come home and um, he'll run Manitou's, and I'll just have a good time <laughs> being friends and family and running trails. Um, other things that are on the list, um, probably just like a lot of pacing. Like I mentioned, we have friends that are running um, Tahoe 200 and um, Moab 250. So would love to get out there and run a lot of miles with them. Um, Alex has gone back and forth on what hundred he wants to do this year. He did bear last year and he came in um, at like 23 hours and like 45 minutes or something yeah he was he was on something it was awesome um, and he did grindstone the year before um so he he's been going back and forth about which um hundred he wants to do um but i don't think fat dog is on the table anymore so probably not fat dog but maybe um um i can't remember what any of them are called they're all like in montana though okay and then for me um, I don't have anything planned right now, but I might, might fly home and run Oil Creek, uh, because I love that race. I didn't tell my parents, but I got, um, an Oil Creek tattoo. Oh, surprise parents. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Um, yeah. Uh, I love that race. I would love to go back and run it. Um, other than that, yeah, nothing has really like piqued my interest too much, um, mostly because we've been so busy with the van. Um, but I'd love to get out and run some iconic routes. Um, the Wonderland Trail is um, beautiful, and I would love to get out there and run that. Um, and if you follow, um, what's his name, Gary, uh, he does the um, that 50-50 Sasquatch, what is it, 50-50? Yeah, um, Gary Robbins, if you follow his YouTube channel, um, he's run some really iconic routes out in Canada and I would love to get out and run some of those iconic routes and it would take me much, much longer than him. But um, yeah, I would love to get out there, you know, get some quality bear spray and run run some big miles out there. <laughs> All about the bear spray. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Yeah. I, I think more and more, you know, especially after the Grand Canyon trip, I mean, races are really fun. You know, it's, it's an awesome experience to see people and the community and all that, but the run ventures are really, really, it's a good time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I love all the planning that goes into it, the route finding um, and the training. Uh, I, I love, love my training runs and Jupiter comes on all of them with me. So I'm never alone. I like to listen to music. Um, yeah. And then just, I'd love to get out there and, and run some really great routes. And I haven't really been able to do that um, in the past year just because we've had Jupiter and Alex was doing a lot of training to go out with his friends and run this iconic route um, in Salt Lake. Um, and it follows like all of the high peaks um, and it's really scary. There's like a lot of scrambling. Um, like I never ever go to the top because it's like very crumbly and like you can fall and die. So it's a lot of like route finding and he was training a lot to, to do these routes up in Utah. So um, now I feel like it's my turn. That's awesome. Good for you. 
That's great. So what's, what's your target date for, is the van ever going to be finished or is it something that's kind of always a work in progress? So right now where we have um, a lot of our cabinets built out and we're just finishing them off so that we can have storage for like our clothes. Again, we have one cabinet that's already mounted and it's beautiful. Alex's craftsmanship is chef's kiss. Um, but yeah, I think as, as long as we can get the cabinets up and um, the walls up, then the only thing that's remaining is our plumbing, but it's really complicated. Um, again, I'm like so unhelpful. So um, once we have those three things like completed, we'll be able to, to pare down a lot of our tools um, and be able to take some stuff out of storage boxes and actually place them into designated spots within the van. Um, and then we'll be able to like hit the road and get going. I think we plan to be in Flagstaff for probably three more weeks. So three more weeks, technically, I would say is, is where we'd be before we're actually hitting the road. And then um, we're going to head out to Colorado. My uncle lives there and then we have a ton of friends um, in Boulder and in Denver area. So hit all that stuff up, um, get some more cooler weather. Um, and then from there, um, probably swing back through Utah and hit up a little bit of uh, Southern California just to see a couple friends very briefly. And then we'll shoot up to Santa Cruz um, we have friends there too. Um, and then, um, yeah, Pacific Northwest, bring it on. It's so exciting, Virginia. <laughs> yeah. We're in a sprint right now, but, um, it's, it's a good sprint and, uh, we'll, we're redlining, so to speak, but it's, it's good. The finish line is, um, very far off in the distance, but we're going to make at least like one of the last aid stations and just post up there for a while that is awesome i love it so much um well i encourage you maybe post a little bit more on social media so we can follow along a little bit yeah definitely and i will show you the outside of the van that's i was i was gonna ask you to okay. make it a fourth a fourth question for you but um all right let's get the tour here there's a little bit of mud um so I'm just going to go barefoot right now and hold on. I'm going to take you off video because Alex will kill me. Okay. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. So yeah, the time, I, I always forget about the time change. It's so bright there right now. Oh yeah. I forgot. <laughs> So here's the back. Um, we have a rack right now and we have like a, a gas tank and a generator that can sit on top of the rack. Um, then we have roof racks. Alex built the roof racks out of Unistrut. So it's um, like a metal that you can get from Home Depot. We have our roof box. These are our flare spaces. So if you can see, they come out a little bit from the side of the van and then they have um, windows. And then, down here, you'll see the lift and the new tires. Again, muddy because it was um, raining and snowing. And then this is actually probably a better view because it's nice and shaded here. So this is the front of the van. Wow. And that, oh yeah. And then Alex blacked out um, this part too, which I think looks pretty cool. So he doesn't like the way, I like the way, I think it's super discreet. And here's a little bit of where we are. So. Got Jupiter, a little fire pit set up. And this is like right outside of Flagstaff. And is it, a, is it a campground area that you're at or? Oh, I didn't even mention. So most of the camping that you do in van life is on um, BLM land. So what that means is it's short for um, Bureau of Land Management and it's basically just like free land where anyone can go and post up. Typically there's like a 14 day limit on how long you can stay. I think we could probably be here for forever because no one ever comes out and patrols this particular area. I know they do um, patrol the BLM land a little bit heavier, like in 
places like Colorado, like Silverton. Um, and the BLM area is everywhere. It's in New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, like everywhere in the West. Um, so if you like Google it, you'll see on the map, it just lights up with all BLM land. And there's none on the East Coast, which is really, really sad. Um, so I don't know that we'll ever have to stay at a campground because there's so much of this. Um, the only thing we'll ever do that's like outside of BLM land is maybe grab an Airbnb every so often um, or a hotel room if we need to like get out of the van. Like it is, it does get really dirty, especially like having a dog, you know, it's, there's mud here. So he'll jump in the bed and we had a white comforter and now it's like rust colored. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yeah and my nails are like disgusting so <laughs> that's awesome Virginia this has been so much fun thank you so much for for joining us tonight yeah and when we get cleaned up um if anyone wants to check back I will post some pictures of the inside of our van um again for reasons that you know are very obvious. I can't do it right now. Um, so yeah, as soon as you guys want to check back, um, I will post some inside pictures just to show you some of the progress we've made. It's really like, it's really crafty and cool. So I'm excited to share. That's awesome. Alex sounds like um, a really talented craftsman. He is. He's, I'll keep him. He's a good one. I, he's <laughs> definitely trail running right now because I don't see him anywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you'll have to tell him that we missed him on the, on the show. We'll have to get you guys back another time and he can, he can join us. Okay. Sounds good. I'll let you say bye to Jupiter too. Oh, Jupiter. There. Say bye. Thanks, Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to run. All right. Thanks right? again, Kim. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, where can people find you on social media? What's your uh, Instagram? Oh, you yeah, so um, my personal Instagram is at Simba Sings, Simba like the lion and sings like the verb, uh, all one word. Um, you can also find me on Facebook or if you want to follow um, Jupiter, his handle is at uh, J-O-O-P, Jupe, um, do, D-U, uh, J-O-U-R, so it's Jupe du jour, um, like soup, but Jupe. Awesome. And he has, uh, yeah, he probably has more updates than I do. <laughs> well, Sally just put in the chat that she said, I'll come back to visit Jupe. So <laughs> he would love that. He loves Sally. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's a good boy. I love it. Well, thank you again, my friend. I hope to see you either at a Bigfoot in Washington or for sure flying through the trees at Tahoe. Hope you know. Hopefully, yeah. Or um, or if Alex gets into manatees, I will let you know because then we will be in Phoenicia. Fantastic! Yeah. That would be great. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, we miss everybody. All right. Thank you so much, Virginia. Thank you guys for tuning in. We had a lot of people uh, watching tonight, which was great. If you missed this video, you can watch it again on our Facebook page, or we will post it on our podcast in the next week or so. You can find that anywhere podcasts are streaming, um, Apple, Google Play, Spotify. It is called Sasquad Trail Runners. And to learn more about us, you can visit us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or our website, sasquadtrailrunning.com. So until we see you again, everybody, keep it squatchy.